Hi everybody, Ron here from Cold Harbor Supply and today we're going to be talking about chips. Now, what is your favorite chip? My favorite chip is going to be the Doritos Sweet Chili Heat Chip because you won't believe how much flavor they can pack onto a triangle. But that aside, we're going to be talking about chips and we have here our chip, which kind of looks like a chip but isn't a chip at all. And this is the Kadex Helmet Integrated Plate. I think I got that right, which is also just known as the chip, so we're just going to call it that from now on. The chip, as the namesake says, takes your Kadex mount or our KDX mount in this case. And we love these KDX mounts. They have a supreme range of adjustability. They have an adjustable dovetail, adjustable height, all that stuff. Now I say adjustable a lot because they have a lot of it and they're super feature rich and super strong. So it takes these KDX mounts and what you do is you basically unscrew the rear over here. This back plate comes off. You align it to the height that you want on the chip. You screw it to the chip and then you take the chip and screw it to your helmet. We're gonna get into how to do that exactly later on in the video. So just a bit of history on why we did this. A lot of us are not using the breakaway features on our helmets, nor are we mounting any GoPros. We have contours, uh, Grek recorders for our nods, and Mohawks for mission recording solutions. So we wanted to take the shroud and the mount and look to cut some weight there without having to sacrifice different features on a goggle or different lens options. There are a lot of iterations of the design. We started off with a 3D kind of prototype over here made out of just some 3D printed stuff. We looked at the contours and the bends of most helmets and then we made it out of different materials for steel, then aluminum, then different kinds of aluminum. And we finally settled on just 6061 aircraft aluminum, super rigid, super light, and offers great rigidity. They are CNC machined, stonewashed, and cut, and they are Cerakoted by our friends at Black Box Customs, who do an awesome job with Cerakoting pretty much anything. Alex and Wally, if you're watching this, hello. You guys did an awesome job with these things, so. We're excited to bring them out to the market. Let's get started. We're gonna move on to the tabletop and we're gonna go over the different features and how to install the chip and what it does for you. So the first reason the chip was designed was to reduce the profile and add rigidity to the goggle. So I have two helmets and two goggles in front of me and I wanted to illustrate how much the chip actually reduces the profile. The profile of the goggles is reduced about an inch from this axis because you're removing the shroud and you're removing the rear plate of the Kadex. In this case, these are RNVG Alphas, and this is just a standard plain Jane RNVG fixed bridge goggle. The RNVG Alphas are gonna be obviously a little bit closer because they stow, but these are about in their furthest stowed configuration without bumping any of the hardware over there. And as you can see, the pod distance, and I'm doing the helmets brim to brim, is actually almost the same. You're only about a centimeter or so further with this guy versus this guy. And the battery pod is actually about the same distance from the pods as the RNVGA. What the chip allows you to do, and I'm a fixed bridge goggle enjoyer, so this pertains to me and other fixed bridge users, is it brings the weight of the pods closer to your spine and your neck, thus reducing head strain and also creating a lower profile. So you're getting almost articulating goggle profile with fixed bridge goggles on the chip. Now this is really exaggerated when I articulate these down. And I know that there is a taller bridge on the RNVG, but you can now see the difference, right? So it's a pretty huge difference. Now, if you were to put the chip with the RNVGA, you can see now, if I were to roll these up, the pods are really close to the helmet, only about an inch or so of space over here, just two fingers that can barely fit them. If you're running articulating goggles with an integrated head mount like the chip, you're doing a really great job of reducing that net strain and lowering the profile of the overall goggles. So one of the reasons the chip was designed was to lower that profile. The other reason was to obviously just reduce the weight. Now there's many ways of reducing a goggle weight from housing to lens choice, but the nice thing about the chip is it allows you to use any housing or lens that you desire with whatever qualities you want with a mount and the weight is actually reduced at the mount level. If you notice this KDX mount over here, it's not the lightest mount in the world, nor is it the heaviest, but it weighs around 185 grams. This is also the newer version with the more skeletonized structure. Mine's is the older version. This is my personal one with the chip installed with the less skeletonized structure. The chip replaces both this rear plate over here on the Kadex and it also replaces the shroud. So you lose the weight on both of those things. The rear plate on this one weighs about 37 grams and the shroud, this is just an ultralight obscure shroud, weighs about 30 grams. Shroud weights can go between about 25 grams to about 50 grams per shroud, depending on the brand. The chip being made of lightweight aluminum weighs at just 15 to 16 or so grams, which is really nice. So you're replacing the weight of those two with the chip. So we're going to do a quick comparison here, and this is a very unscientific comparison. So now I have the chip with a ops core shroud. In this case, this weighs a total of 216 grams. 
And like I said, the chip replaces that rear plate and it replaces the shroud. This is also the older version of the Kdex. It's a little bit skele less skeletonized, so it's going to weigh about five grams more than the newer ones. But it's also compatible with older Kdexes. And this weighs 166 grams. So you lose about 50 or so grams. And in this economy, that can actually be a lot. But all jokes aside, that does add up over time. And because of that lower profile stow, and because it's closer to your head, you're actually going to be feeling that weight a little bit less because the center of gravity is a little closer. So all that being said about the chip and the Kdex, let's actually go through our installation guide and what your chip comes with. So you can either pick a black or a bronze chip. The reason why we made this bronze is to match with the helmet more so than the Kdex itself. The gold Kdexes, as you can see from this one, are actually, like I said, more gold than tan. It's a really nice color. They're not IR reflective at all. It's just what Kdex decided to go with. But we went with the bronze instead of the gold color because we just feel like it adds a nice little bit of contrast. The black one obviously matches perfectly fine with the black Cerakoted chip. So when you get a chip, like I said, you can either choose black or bronze, and it comes with a little screw accessory bag. We also sell this screw accessory bag separately, so if you need to do any shroud work or you want to modify your helmet, you can do that as well. So inside, I already took these screws out. You're going to get these screws over here, which mount it up to the Kdex mount itself, and you get a lot of different hardware. You get these guys over here, which are going to be the nuts for the end of the chip. So this is what it, you see on the outside of your helmet. You can use your existing ones if you want, but we included them just in case it wasn't compatible. We also have three lengths of helmet mounting screw. We have the long boy screws over here for more ballistic helmets. We have these short, tiny screws here for very thin bump helmets and for harnesses. So if you're running this on a trace harness, it actually works really well because it reduces the profile by a lot and the weight by a lot. And you might want to use these tiny screws because it just bolts onto the Tegris over there. And we have these middle size screws for anything in between. It will also come with three of these washers over here. These are all black oxide, and this is just a washer in case you need to shim it, or you need to take out some slack or give it a little bit more to bite on on the helmet. For this installation, you're going to need a number two screwdriver. Please use a number two. Don't use anything weird like a pause drive or a number one or a number three. It might not fit. You might strip the screws, and that is going to be obviously on you. You're also going to need a 1 16th hex key for our screws and our kit. If you want as well, you can also use a little bit of blue Loctite to thread lock these threads in. We don't recommend over tightening them. We also don't recommend red Loctite because you're not gonna be able to have any reversibility if something messes up. So blue Loctite just adds a little bit of vibration resistance and is good to go. Remove the black chip out of the way because we're going tan on tan here. And the first step is going to be taking off the rear mount. Now, if you have a very new Kdex, this is gonna be super tight. But my Kdex has already been loosened up because I've been using it as a demo for a bit and I loosened it up for the video. But a new Kdex is going to be super tight and these are going to be difficult to get out. So you just take these two screws out. They might be on a different position. They might be down here for your Kdex if it's new. I've already adjusted this to my head. And you have the actual mounting bit that will mount onto the chip. Please keep this. If you want to resell your mount or do anything to the future, this is nice to have. This has the breakaway feature in it as well as this is the part that locks into your helmet. And there's also some spare screws here for the other parts of the Kdex. So you want to keep this. You also want to keep the long screws. Don't use these with the chip because they'll go too far. You won't be able to adjust the height. Uh, but you want to keep these because they just go with the mount. I just kind of stick them in here for storage. Now there's these six holes over here. And that allows the chip and the rear of the Kdex to have a huge range of adjustment depending on what kind of goggles you're using. So if you're for some reason, using a very poorly adjusted helmet, you can have it all the way bottomed out like this. Or if you're very highbrow, you can have it all the way up like that. And any permutation in between. Now, what height works best for you is going to depend on your housing. For me, it's going to be around there. So that's going to be the height of my housing. And the way that you can tell is when the Kdex is on your helmet. And with the normal shroud, you see the height and you can put the chip beside it. And then you can kind of estimate where the holes are going to be. You can always reverse this if you want. And also there is a bit of a leeway in the mount, of course, because it goes up and down. You do want to get it as close as possible. So for me, it's going to be right around there. The middle holes with the middle holes. Very, very nice. The chip is going to come out with these two small screws. You can Loctite these in if you want. I'm not going to because I like to live life on the edge. Uh, but if you're really rough with your stuff, you can Loctite it in. I do recommend it. And you don't want to tighten them all the way yet because there is a little bit of play in here and that's so we can make sure it's aligned. So if you don't, if you tighten these all the way right now uh, without kind of aligning it, you can have the chip be slightly off angle. So what I recommend doing it uh, when you're tightening it is either top it up or bottom it out. So that way it's resting on the post of the screws and it's nice. 
So let's tighten that up and we're good to go. Now, if you use Loctite, you can let this set for a day if you want, or you can put on the helmet and let it set, but I wouldn't play around with it too much until the Loctite set. But if you're not like me, then you're good to go to the next step. We're gonna set this aside for now. Depending on the helmet you're using, you might have slightly different accommodations for it. In this case, I'm using an Opscore carbon bump. So I took off my Prince Attack, I took off my Ear Pro. The only thing I have on is my funny patches and this little FMA light over here because I'm cheap. And in the back, you'll see that we have the Lux liner in here. Oh no! You can access the screws through the Lux liner if you really want. Now, different helmets will have different liners, but I recommend taking the liner off. I'm going to do that off screen because there's a lot of Velcro and uh, you do need to be a bit careful with it to not break the crush foam. So I'll be back in a second. Now we have the beautiful carbon fiber shell of this helmet. What we're going to want to do is we're going to want to take these three screws out, remove the existing shroud and install our chip in. Now, depending on the helmet, sometimes these screws can be occluded by Velcro. So you might need to remove that. In the case where you need to remove this, you can just replace it with generic Velcro that you find at the store or you can buy these discs online at whatever retailer you want. So as you can see, these screws come out relatively easy. Now you can use the screws on your helmet if you want. For some helmets like the PGD, you do need to use their screws because the holes are drilled quite a bit larger than our screws and their screws work best. For ones like the Opscore, they use essentially the same screws that we have and you're gonna be fine. Okay, so don't lose the screws and don't lose your mount because this thing is very expensive. One nice thing about the chip too is if you want to retain the bungee from the Opscore shroud, you actually can by just taking it off and running it through there. Uh, I'm not gonna do that, but I know my buddy Max has done that with his helmet, which I'm gonna pull up over here. And as you can see, he retained the bungee on his helmet. So he bungees the nods in through there. And when he's not using them, he just bungees these up like that. Now, if we take this helmet and we put the chip on, you might notice that the chip sits a little proud in some ways, it kind of seems to float in the middle. And that is by design because we designed this to fit a multitude of helmets with slightly different curves. And we have this multi-curve design. The screws will sit flush on it and the chip itself is designed to bend a little bit with that aluminum and that kind of tensions the whole structure and gives it a lot of rigidity. So to gauge what screws you need, you're gonna look at the different screw lengths. I'm starting off with the shortest one over here and I'm just putting it through the hole. And you'll see that this screw is probably going to be the actual right length for the chip and it's perfect. So for most bump helmets that are using carbon fiber, you can actually use the shortest screws. I also recommend putting a washer on the end over here so that it has a bit more surface area on the rear part of the screw to click into the helmet, which gives it a little bit more rigidity and strength, kind of increases the rear flange. I personally also like to start with the top one because it kind of holds everything in place and you can go from there. Once this is in place like that, it has a little bit of wiggle room, a little bit of leeway. You can take the nut and you can put it on top loosely like so, making sure it's relatively centered and you don't need to do the final tightening just yet. So I'm gonna do the same thing with the other ones. We're putting the screw on the washer like that and then putting the washer through to where the chip is. All right, so we have all three screws loosely in like so and it looks to be relatively straight. Uh, if it's not straight, you have, like I said, a tiny bit of leeway to bend it into place. And as you screw this in, the chip will bend and tension into place, which is by design. So screw it in. I would go finger tight. I wouldn't go super tight. I wouldn't try to strip it or yam it out. You don't want it to get stuck. All right, let's have a look at that. That looks pretty darn straight to me. Uh, the camera can tell it looks pretty good. And what we're gonna do is slap the Lux liner back on and try it out. So here's the helmet all set up with the chip. I put my Ear Pro back on and my counterweight and all that stuff. And here's what it looks like. As you can see, super ultra, ultra low profile to the helmet. Barely uh, can fit my finger between the helmet and the mount, which is really nice. And it deploys wonderfully, locks up wonderfully. And that's what it looks like with the chip on it. it looks pretty freaking sweet. So is the chip the mount for you? Now, I love the Kadex mount and a lot of people really like it. If you want a super feature rich mount, the Kadex mount is the one to go with. It has just the most features and the most adjustability out of every mount on the market. You take that and then you combine it with something that makes it a bit more light, a bit more rigid and a lot lower profile and you get the Kadex plus the chip. In my opinion, that's a pretty awesome combo. We've been testing this for a few months now. It's been in development for almost a year and we're super excited to get this out on the market. So thanks for all the support everybody. 
the chip. It's pretty awesome. It might not be sweet chili heat, but it's probably the second best thing. We'll see you in the next one.